All right, welcome to the May 30th Aries Cloud Agent, uh, Cloud Agent Python user group meeting, ACAPUG. A um, couple of things on the on the agenda. We're going to talk about an on-creds in ACAPI and a, a brief update from Indicio. Um, I want to go through a few ACAPI PRs and see if we can do some let's, um, can, let's play can we merge this, see if we can get some of those off the off the list and get them merged or push back for other things. Um, as there's time, I want to do a, I got a little presentation on converting from unqualified peer dids to did peer three. And so I would like to um, push on that. Um, we are recording the call, so I'll post after perhaps um, with ex excerpts um, grabbed for specific topics. We'll see how, how that's needed. Um, a reminder, this is a Hyperledger Linux Foundation meeting. Uh, the Linux Foundation antitrust policy, which is in front of you on the screen, is in effect, as is the Hyperledger code of conduct. Be good to one another. Um, if there are any, is there, if there is anyone new to the um, community, to the meeting, and wants to introduce themselves and talk about what they're doing, um, now would be the time as well if you have any announcements or want to suggest agenda items, please do so. Grab the mic. Wade Barnes. Uh, an announcement. Um, so Hyperledger, um, they want to do a um, uh, contributor and maintainer outreach uh, for Indy and Aries, similar to what they do for the Fabric teams. So if anybody is interested, if you could contact uh, Sean Bohan, I'll uh, put his email address in the chat. What does that mean? I don't really know what it means. I, I think <laughs> I, I think they want to just um, get some more um, get some more excitement around the, the projects and various things, and get uh, feedback from the uh, contributors and maintainers on you know how the project's going and what they'd like to see change. Okay. There is a, um, coming out of the Open Source Summit in Vancouver, there's two surveys that I've noted. Um, one on, on um, Linux Foundation and open source in general, the state of open source, um, that's at the Linux Foundation level. And then there's also a Hyperledger survey that um, was sent out um, that they're looking for understanding of, what hyperledger is and 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 how it's perceived so um that might be one of the things that's that they're looking at anyone else want to grab the mic right now all right um a reminder that the acapi.org um, documentation site is up um, there'll be more evolution on that. I've been away for a while, but I want to get back to adjusting some of that. So I'll spend some of my time in the near future doing that. And um, would glad to introduce anyone else to what it takes. Basically, it is a um, it grabs all of the MD files, organizes them, and publishes them as a website. Um, so if you're looking to use see what's in an, uh, you know, a markdown file in the Acapug repo. It's a, it's a whole lot friendlier a place to go rather than um, GitHub um, to try to navigate through the folders and find the repo, the, the, the readmes and things like that. It's a much easier way to go. So encourage that to get used. Um, we have an non-creds workshop tomorrow, May 31st. The link to register is here. So, um, Rodolfo Miranda, Miranda, um, Patrick St. Louis and myself are going to be presenting that. Um, and um, we're going to be playing with an on-creds um, hands-on, but also going through some a lot of the background and, and what's coming with an on-creds. So I'll invite anyone to that. With that, I will turn over to um, Daniel um, to talk about um, how how things are proceeding with an on creds, and it's good because I've got a dog now telling me he wants to go outside, so I need to deal with that. So over to you, 
Uh, do you want screen, Daniel? Um, I will be pretty quick. Uh, I've linked to the document that I'll, I'll be talking through, and there's just a few bullet points, so it'll it'll be pretty quick. Um, so I'll I'll uh, uh, not screen share this time around. But uh, yeah, let's see. So um, as a brief update, um, so uh, I've got a doc uh, linked from the agenda. Uh, you can go through. I've got links to a few things that are are relevant to our progress here. Um, but uh, we've gone through and done a number of things lately. Uh, we've updated the Anoncreds RS build we're using. So we're now using ones that are actually being published from the Anoncreds RS library, which was um, an early challenge that we had with the project where there was a lack of support there. Uh, we've now gotten over that problem. Uh, we've gone through and updated the tails file handling. Uh, we are now using the hash of the tails file as the file name uh, that gets uploaded to a tails server. Uh, and then there were some associated changes to the in detail server implementation that we uh, made to support that. Um, we've currently left the original functionality that, that's retained within our, our changes. Uh, there's a newly introduced Anodcred's tails server um, component within Akapai that uh, uses the new behavior. Uh, we haven't added the intelligent switching between the two based on uh, configuration or anything like that yet. Um, so that, that'll need to be further refined, I think. But uh, we've gotten the tails file upload, uh, resolving the circular dependency that we were experiencing previously. Um, so that's all in place and working well at this point. We have basic checks on the tails file that gets uploaded just to make sure that it you know, basically matches the hash. Uh, but we're also investigating whether we can do any deeper validation on the upload file also and what that would look like. Uh, validation on the uploaded file. Getting some feedback from you, Stephen, I think, on the mic. Right. Um, OK, and then further on here, we've got uh, so our MVP for the revocation, we're, we're nearly complete with that process. Uh, so uh, when I say MVP, just getting the absolute basic steps down, we haven't gone through the automated flows just yet, um, but just getting the basics of uh, being able to do all the setup for uh, the non credits objects. I've left that step off, I realize, but we can do issuance and presentation all the way through um, without revoking the credential because we're actually, that's what we're working on currently is uh, okay. the publishing of revocation updates. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's our, our focus for this week is, is finishing that off um, as well as getting into the automated setup of revocation registries um, and just in general, further cleanup uh, of the implementation so far. and. Uh, in a lot of cases, the existing implementation of revocation just to get things where we need them to be. Um, and we're also planning to start digging into updating tests and stuff as well. So uh, yeah, and then below that, I've got some links to our, our current PR DAC pilot. We haven't updated that branch in a little bit since we've been working on a different branch, which I also have linked there. Excellent. OK, so good. Thank you. Um, Any questions from anyone? Awesome. Can't wait to have that available. <laughs> Indeed. Can't wait to be done with it. Yeah, I can imagine. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, um, I did uh, want to mention this. I left this. We're not going to have an update. Um, we are continuing to make progress in the use of um, Redis with Akapai, with the Akapai based mediator. So those things are proceeding and that's a good thing. Um, but I did get a message from the team at BC Gov. They wanted to remind people don't ever use um, info logging in production. You want to minimize the logging necessary. Um, <clears throat> fun story Wade's got that um, he uh, activated a, a dev instance of of Akapai with logging and mediator and did a bit of load testing and um, with info set it absolutely blew out a um, a logging system on our on our open shift and we got calls from the uh, calls from the platform operators to say what are you doing you're you're sucking up this space so go ahead wait if you want to say something yeah it was something like several million um 
several million uh, logs per hour that they were uh, that they were looking at getting, and it was like it was just blowing up the Elasticsearch database. So make absolutely sure you are not using logging in production or any sort of system like that and be aware that especially from what i hear especially ascar the logging is extremely high and it probably should be adjusted and maybe will be adjusted um to change a lot of the info logging to be debug logging um to make that less likely to happen but anyway worthy of an all caps reminder okay can we merge this um i want to jump into um Acapi prs and see if we can get some feedback going on this. Um, this one came up today. Uh, so we want to drop Python 360. Anyone shocked, upset by that? Anyone with a comment on that idea? We've used 3.6 uh, since, since the beginning and never really changed it. Um, long overdue for that. OK. Um, so, Daniel, you've you've created this. Um, you've just reported just before the meeting that some of the integration tests um, are not working. Um, actually, they're get, that's the second time I think it's been canceled after 360 minutes. Yeah, there's a something's timing out on uh, the integration tests right now. So I, I need to take a look at how the uh, image changes I made are, are impacting that. I, I suspect it might be just some quiet failures on, on a container or something like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, I only noticed that this morning, so I haven't had a chance to look too much at it yet. Um, I, I did also comment here. Uh, I've got a number of things going on at the moment. So if you happen to have some time and are feeling really motivated to look at this, um, contributions are welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. Jason. Does this include changing all the uh, demos? The demo, the, a lot of the demo images are three six, right? Um, so the integration tests are actually using the demo images, and, and when I the initial changes that I made, actually I failed to include the uh, demo images, and then that promptly caused the uh, the integration test to fail. So this has adjusted that, um, but it seems to be imperfectly adjusted at this point. So, but yeah, those those images should be okay. Fine. Yeah, just just curious because I was just having some issues with the. <laughs> Trying to right. put in newer libraries into the demo images and whatnot. Right. So I was just curious about that. So great. Okay. Thanks. Um, I, I will see if um, there's someone on our team that could take a look at that. I'm thinking, um, Cyro, maybe you could take a look at that, given you were looking at integration tests relatively recently. Um, uh, maybe that's one you could have a quick look at and see if you can help out Daniel. Yeah, I will. Uh, I can take a quick look at that suite. Okay, good, good. And then any anything we can do to push this forward, um, that would be useful. I think um, getting this done sooner than later would be a good thing. Uh, okay, agreed on that. Now I'll also call out that after we get this particular PR merged, I think it will make sense to go through and do a, a number of updates on dependencies as well. Um, okay, since we're we're kind of behind. Several of our, our dependencies have been updated to drop Python 3.6 support. So we're actually on older versions of those uh, okay. to keep that, so. Okay, thanks uh, thanks for that reminder. I'm gonna <laughs> quickly write myself a note. <laughs> I wanna get a uh, an issue in on that. Okay, good. Um, this one, I think, should be ready to go. Um, did a little looking at it yesterday. Basically, what this does is um, we have a script that um, is available to update the open API um, to the latest, uh, the latest version. This adds, um, I believe what it's doing is both um, generating a swagger a open API 2.0 and 3.0 and just adds the latest version of the generator from an older version. So speaking of dependencies that were old, um, I've looked at this, compared it. Um, I think we're ready to go and approved it. Does anyone have any 
thoughts. Anyone in particular that's used the open API um, generator stuff. I just, that's the only reason I was holding back on this was I don't actually use it. Um, so is anyone using it and, and have any comments on this or concerns about merging this? We also had a bit of a conversation here and I'll, I'll probably put these things in about we're getting way too many warnings and error messages from it. it the it works to use it, but um, it would be good to get this cleaned up. So um, uh, Marit, Maritz um, had a number of comments in there about what to do about that. So um, I'm, I'm hoping to get that into an issue and, and get that looked at so we get some approval on or get some movement on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and merge this. Um, this will probably be the last merge on the call because now we'll have to update all of the PRs that we look at next. But anyway, we've got that one merged. So we at least merged one. Um, Sherman, comments on this one? Um, I did notice that we had a, a integration test failure on this. Oh, I didn't take a look at that. So maybe I can take a look at that this morning, the failure okay. part, but yeah. I'll take a look at that. That was okay. basically it was it was all on the demo side, nothing in Akapai. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's that's why I was asking about the um demo images because as the library that was having the issue, I was trying to <laughs> put in the, the newest version of the library that they said they fixed the bug and and uh um, I can, couldn't easily do it. Um so I kind of fudged it, but it turned out that it didn't actually fix the bug in the spot we had it regardless but that's why my question was about the demo yeah. images getting updated so but i'll take a look at why that uh test is failing okay you might want to wait till after we sort out the three six and maybe look at this after the three six is good. done yeah good point okay i think this one's ready to go it's been approved by several um i don't think timo's here but daniel any comments on that i know you looked at it uh, no, yeah, uh, this one looked good, so I'm happy okay. with it. All right, I'll update the branch and get this merged. Um, oh, so is this something about base wallet and non? Yeah, okay. We had a few issues like that. Um, this is a bigger one. Um, comments on this one. This is from Darko to add um, two five five one nine signature twenty twenty support. Um, this one is dependent on the three sixty, so uh, or three point six. So we'll probably follow up with that. Any anyone with knowledge on this one and want to comment? Um, Andrew, I asked you to take a look at it if you could, um, given the nature of this type of change and your knowledge on signature suites and so on. Um, so it'd be good if you could look, take a look at it as well. But as I say, I think we'll wait till the 360 and get our 3.6 um, completion and then get Darko to um, adjust the um, items based on using um, post Python 3.6. Okay. Um, Daniel, you talked, you're ready to have this one done. Um, interesting problem. Um, good catch on it. Um, I think this looks easy and, and um, ready to go. Uh, comments and are people fine with it? Anyone else take a look at it? That's the change. Yeah, to, to summarize, uh, there is cache inconsistencies between replicas during did exchange that caused errors in other protocols. Um, to summarize some of the comments that I made in the description, since the connection target for uh, a connection changes throughout the did exchange protocol anyways, uh, there was actually some code that existed prior to my changes that was just 
immediately clearing the cache on every connection record save, um, which would have occurred at each step of the did exchange protocol anyways. Um, so rather than just having cache be stored and then be improperly cleared later on um, on a different replica and, and failing to be cleared on, on the replica that was originally answering the, the request, um, I just adjusted it so caching of connection targets only occurs on completion of the did exchange. Um, so this kind of sidesteps some of the issues that I think we've experienced in other situations as well. I haven't yeah. tested any of those other scenarios, uh, so I, I don't know for sure. Um, but it makes but, sense. Yeah. So it, it this kind of maybe hints a little bit at like how do we actually want to treat the cache going forward? Do we want it to be a shared state thing, or do we want it to be a, a local state thing only and only for you know ephemeral values or whatever? Yeah. Um, this goes further in the direction of supporting local only as opposed to a shared state mechanism. Right. And and what we really want is, I, well, I think one option we want to have available, and this has been done with, with Redis, is have a, a Redis shared cache cross. And um, in DCO, Daniel, your team has put together a an instance of using Redis for this type of thing, I believe, correct? Right, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. The, these changes are partially motivated. Uh, we were working with Sigma, and they were wanting to avoid having to introduce a shared cache mechanism if okay. they could. Got it. Um, and it, this was the only problem that they were experiencing in that uh, in that okay. setup. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, any developers anywhere have a? I'm gonna I'm gonna approve it. Um, if anyone else has any concerns with it, um, take a look. I won't merge it yet. We can't merge it yet till it gets updated anyway. And so, Daniel, if you could update it from the, the main branch and then gets retested. Good. All right. Um, Maybe I'll do one or two more. Let's see. Yeah, again, this one looks um, pretty straightforward. Um, update the branch. And approve and run. I just wanted a developer to take a look. So this is just a, a tweak to how how the NGROC endpoint gets extracted and used. So a couple of tweaks to a, a shell script. So I assume this is fine. Um, I, di I didn't have a chance to actually run it. So I was hoping, Syra, that's why I put your name on it to take a look at running it. Um, but I think it should be fine. So likely that will get um, moved forward. Yeah, I was going to spot check that this morning, but yeah, I don't see any um, concerns with the changes that are made there. Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, this is a depend upon change. Um, I'm imagine. Oh, this is in in uh, the area you've got. Um, Sherman looks like in the playground. Um, so probably get you to take a look at that. Or, or, or you know, just merge it as you see fit, depending on how much um, you think it needs review. Yeah, it's, uh, just, it's just a bump in the requirements um, thing. Um, but I, I can't do merging. <laughs> oh, you can approve and then I can merge. Um, I don't even think I can approve. Maybe can, anyway, I'll take a look. Yeah, you can put an approval on it, and then I can proxy your ah. knowledge. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. You can communicate your approval. Okay, <laughs> we'll do. All right. Um, this is a <clears throat> a big change that um, Sherman you did uh, for adding updating from an EFK to an Elk stack. Um, I think this is pretty clean and I've run through it once and it worked great. Um, 
I think this is ready to go. I would suspect. Do you have any reason to think it's not ready, Jason, or we're ready? No, to go? I mean, I, I was using it a lot. So yeah. to do, you know, all the number testing with uh, Redis and the mediator, et cetera, et cetera. And then all that debugging with the trace log stuff. Um, so it worked for me. Um, yeah, it's basically just an update. The EFK one was so far out of date that it's kind of updated and made a little bit more flexible to integrate into run demo and, and all those situations. So um, if someone else was able to follow the instructions and get it to work, that's good. <laughs> okay. That certainly doesn't, having it there doesn't have any impact, negative impact on any other chunks of code. There's no like hard dependency on it or anything. So right. just another tool. Cool. All right, um, I'll get that one reviewed. As I say, I've run through it on my own machine and it worked great. So I'm happy to get that one pushed forward. Um, this one, Timo's looked through it, had some back and forth. Um, looks like this is close to resolved. Um, So we're looking for uh, an update to base. I don't know if Sasha is on the call, but if not, um, this is likely to get uh, merged pretty soon. Looks like Daniel, you've you've been happy with it. Timo is more or less happy with it. Had some conversations, so we'll we'll see about that and then get it merged. Yeah, I, I think there might be some minor adjustments here and there, but okay. uh, and and I can communicate back to Sasha on the Sigma team. Um, to, oh, is that to... where Sasha's from? Okay, good. Yep, yep, excellent, good. Last one I wanted to hit on this one was um, Shanjot, the one you've been working on on settings per per tenant basis as opposed to um, on the overall Akapai instance. Do you want to talk a bit about that? And, and do you think this one's ready to go and we should get it finalized? Yeah, it's it's ready to go. So it's basically uh, like right now we are able to set up uh, startup uh, like flags, the startup parameters, but we can't do it for uh, at the sub uh, sub wallet or the tenant level. So basically yeah. this allows like uh, modifies the endpoints for sub wallet creation and update uh, so that we can uh, specify those uh, startup uh, settings for uh, at the tenant level. So it, that's pretty much it. I don't see a single MD file that's updated. Uh, okay, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that. Um, yeah, I would say maybe add it to the multi-tenant one. Uh, we'll um, do. The multi-tenant yeah. MD file exists. So I think just adding a section to that. And then when I highlight it in the change log, I think between the two, that'll help. Uh, I'll it. work on that. Uh, sounds good. Okay. Um, I think that takes care of a lot. Um, are there any other ones down here? Um, this is an open API demo. I think I just have to merge that. I think it's just documentation. Um, oh, auto remove flags for presentation request. Oh. Jason comments on that. That's been out for a while and we need to deal with that one. Yes, I've got to <laughs> refresh my brain here on that. It has been a while. <laughs> um, yeah, so previously we just had the, um, we were only saving one exchange. Yes. Uh, the credential exchange. Um, so yeah. so these, um, Basically follows the same pattern. Um, it seems to work out okay without Let's, any kind of impact. Um, so I think the documentation goes through it pretty well of what to do. And we've added it. So a change to the ex uh, credential exchange is that now you can pick which side. So when we put in the presentation exchange, there's yeah. a configuration for each side of the conversation. And we added that in for the credential exchange as well. So the existing code works. It's just now there's an enhancement to the credential exchange side as well. So okay. if you want to preserve the holder side or whatever, you can do that. 
um, Shanjot, is this one of the settings that's um, inherited downwards and should it be? Um, goes to the tenant level versus the Akapug, Akapai level? Uh, the, yeah, auto. Yeah, I think so. This is one of them, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, you've got conflicts here, Jason, so you're going to deal with that. Okay. <laughs> That's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, it has been. <laughs> okay. Um, that's good. Um, this is one of the issues we're having is, um, you know, being consistent as maintainers in, in getting these resolved. Um, so uh, that is going to be more of a focus in the next while. We're getting a lot of updates from a lot of different people, and we really need to pay more attention to these and get them closed faster. Um, so um, we will be doing this more often in Acapug, and then I'm going to make an effort to try to bring the maintainers together to make sure we're, we're, um, being timely in addressing these and, and, um, and working on them. <clears throat> Another note, I'm going to be updating the maintainers file, um, to make sure it's accurate, but if anyone, um, wants to be a maintainer and has, um, met the qualifications, which is at least five uh, five pull requests been merged and uh, uh, knowledge and interest in being so absolutely welcome to do so. And we'd we'd love to have um, additional maintainers that that are willing to take the time and uh, willing and able to take the time to um, stay on top of these um, pull requests as they come in and make sure they're getting merged in a timely way. And not only that, but feedback is given to the um, to the contributors um, making them. That's even, you know, just as important as as getting them nailed down. <clears throat> getting them assessed is is getting feedback to those that are contributing and and making sure that they want to um, continue to make that contribution and update what they're they've done to meet the. Uh, the needs. So a pitch for anyone who, you know, has a knowledge but hadn't thought about it of of being an actual maintainer for the um for the framework. Okay. That's that. Um looks like I'm missing a topic in here, which is I wanted to talk about before we go, and we have a few minutes um of um peer three um upgrade. So let me jump to that. Uh, basically, I have an overview of transitioning to period three, and I wanted to um, make sure this is right. And then um, it's likely that um, one of the developers on the BC Gov team, Cyro, on the meeting is likely going to take this next. And so I wanted to um, solicit feedback and, and get him some help as he started uh, working on this. So getting qualified. Um, so background, we have two types of unqualified dids um, in Indy. That's not right. So let me just fix that. I had that on my brain yesterday in Akapai. Um, <clears throat> two types of unqualified dids, did solve dids. I don't know why that's underlined, but um, that are public dids on an Indy ledger. Um, so again, they would not be qualified. And then we have um, peer dids, um, on a didcom messaging relationship between two parties. So, uh, you know, an issuer and a holder might have uh, established a connection. They exchange peer dids. Currently, most of those are unqualified peer dids. Um, pretty obvious from the context of where they get used, um, which, which type it is. So there's not a need to get a, a, an unqualified did and, and, and try to look it up on a ledger when it's a peer did. Um, so that's not really a big issue, but we want to update all ARIES agents to use qualified DIDs, Akapai agent, Akapai based agents, and all other ARIES. So we want to use qualified DIDs. It's pretty easy for public DIDs. We just prepend did solve. I guess I need another colon in there. Um, once we do that, everything should continue to work. We already support did soft, so that should work. But unqualified peer dids are a little trickier. And we've talked about this on the ARIES working group call. So some of this is repeat, but I thought it worthwhile to, to lay the foundation. Um, unqualified did is calculated in the same way as did soft. So select the first 16 bytes of a 256-bit um, 
verification key or the hash of it, I believe. But anyway, um, the first 16 bytes of that becomes the unqualified did, the, the identifier value. But that is not a standard did method. Um, there's no prefix to use for it, did colon whatever. So we did talk about in the Aries community creating one, did peer legacy or something like that. Um, but we had another idea. Um, so we'll talk about that. Um, how it works during a did exchange or using either connections or did exchange. Um, each party independently generates, uh, if, during their part of the um, did exchange, generates a key pair. Um, from that, they generate the namespace did identifier, the stuff after did colon, um, which is the unqualified part in this case. Uh, they don't put a prefix on it. Uh, it they created did, did, did doc. And then they send the other party, the unqualified did and the did doc. So they're sending two pieces of data in the um, uh, various calls. Um, second background, backgrounded. Wow, I did these quickly and without oversight. <laughs> um, did peer works by having, um, is, is intended for exactly this purpose. And it specified that, uh, that there would be different types of um, did peers and they would be numbered zero, one, and two so far. And as of a merge that was done this morning, there is a uh, type three as well. So there's uh, four overall. Did peer zero is, a, is exactly equivalent to the did key um, protocol and therefore should probably never be used and did key should always be used in its place since many, it is far more prevalent. So, so did peer zero, eh, probably don't ever want to use it. Um, did peer one is similar to unqualified peer dids, but the did identifier, the, the namespace identifier is derived from the hash of the did doc and not the public key. So a different way to, uh, to, to derive the public key. Um, Worse, um, or, or a big problem with did peer one is that the canonicalization of the did doc is not really defined in the spec. Um, Aries framework JavaScript defined a way to do that, um, but it's not really defined in the spec itself, which is not a good thing. Um, so that's a second issue and, and has led us to say, we probably shouldn't use did peer one. And so we're leaning away from it. Um, did peer two, uh, the elements of the did doc are um, extracted from the did doc itself and used to construct the names namespace identifier. So there's a set of rules for how you construct the the um, the identifier following uh, following the two the the part of it following the two in the in the did. Um, the result of that is that the dids are very long and those elements are all visible in all uh, all interactions, which is not ideal. It's it's a very long, it adds to every message being sent. And in plain text, all of the details of the did doc are, are shared. Um, but uh, the difference is you just need to send a did. You don't need to send a did doc because the actual did doc can be derived from extracting the elements out of the did itself. So that's good. Um, so did peer is something new. I actually, this is a link to the um, PR for it, but the pull request was approved this morning by Daniel. So it's actually now in the specification itself. So did peer three, the idea of that is to get the benefit of did peer two, but eliminate the need to send the full did peer on every message. Basically, um, whoops, derive a namespace identifier from did peer two, calculate the um, SHA-256 hash of the did peer two did, and you now have did peer three, uh, did colon peer colon three, and then the value of the identifier. That's the um, just the hash of the actual did peer two. So after sending a did peer two once, we can then 
thereafter send it the same did peer two every time, or we can send it did peer three. And if we send did peer three, much shorter. Um, but of course, this, the recipient needs to understand did peer three. So that's a, a complication in it. Any questions or comments so far? Um, Sam, am I getting this right? Uh, nothing yet. You haven't yet explained the how you know thing, but I'm guessing you're getting to that. Getting to that. <laughs> so transitioning from unqualified dids. Part one is adding in Akapai support for did peer two and three. So right now, um, Shanjot did a, a pile of work to support did peer one matching AFJ. I now would suggest that we retarget that work to support did peer two and did peer three in Akapai. Um, in particular, and first thing it needs to do is support the receipt of both those did methods. Um, so suggesting that we sort of retarget that PR that's in there for did peer one, um, it's not been merged yet and eliminate, um, replace the did peer one element of that with support for using did peer two. And that will enable us to use a transition to using did peer two and three. Um, we do that automatically. So we, if the other party sends one, we can handle it. If the other party sends uh, a did peer two before we've sent um, a did over to the other party, we should use did peer two. Otherwise, um, we have a flag that that we can activate when needed to initiate sending it. That's always the tricky part. When should we send it? And how do we know the other party is using it? That comes as a community coordinate update. Although there, I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit as well. There's another way that we can get partially through it without um, using the flag, without only using the flag. Actually, no, I don't think there is any other way. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, and then and then we need a community coordinated update transition unqualified bids to peer three across the community. Oh, sorry. Part two, um, the community coordinated update is at this part that we, we start to move to peer did two and three. Andrew. Um, yeah, isn't... This did peer two and three stuff only a concern when we switch to didcom two or wanting to do something well, in the old protocols? It's gonna, it's gonna be required then, but yes. we should we should have done this a year ago. Yeah. So it's not just a concern, it's just a requirement there. Um okay. But uh like in the connections and did exchange protocols, we're sending the whole did document. Um, I think we can just send a did string in there. But I don't know. I think we can make it work. Um, but it, it seems a bit disruptive to update those two. I'm not what's those. Sorry? Sorry, you, you think until we go to did peer, uh, did comp two, we don't need to do this? Um, well, at the moment we are, we're switching to this did peer one support in uh, did exchange. And I, I think we're just targeting compatibility with, with AFJ. So I guess it depends what they're doing. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, they, they actually pioneered this. They've already got mostly written code. Uh, it needs to be made a little bit more canonical, and then they've um, they're going to document their approach uh, for the the transition. So, did peer it is not canonicalized in the sense that it is um, that it is uh, reliably created in order every time. And so you have to impose a little bit, like it allows you to specify things in various orders. And so the, the, the community coordinated update will specify the exact order that you that you use to construct the did peer two when, when we're doing this transition. So this is definitely an approach that's been pioneered by AFJ. Okay. Okay. Um, 
transitioning unqualified bids to did peer three. Um, the goal is to convert existing unqualified bids to be did peer three bids. And I, I put a question, which is kind of like Andrew was asking, you know, is it useful? Do we need to do this or do we just continue to support unqualified bids when we get them and eventually don't send any anymore? But anyway, if we did want to actually convert them from unqualified to qualified, um, I believe what we can do is we already send a did doc from Akapai. So that would mean both parties have the did doc. Um, both parties would then be able to convert that into or to generate from that a did peer two because that is very formally defined exactly how you would do that. And if that's true, then we can def, uh, derive a did peer three from the did peer two. So that's the idea for that. And with that, we would be able to convert all, all unqualified did com peer dids to did peer three. I got a question, Stephen. Yeah. So in my mind, we have two options. We can either do the community coordinated update just to did uh, peer two. Yeah. Because that gets us out of the unqualified land that we really need to escape from. Three is a nice optimization. Um, I was unsure about whether we should community coordinated update all the way to did peer three uh, for support for that, or whether we should stop at a two and then allow the existing mechanisms to detect support for three. Since we need new code for two anyway, I think we should just assume everyone's going to implement two and three together. That would be okay. my my suggestion. This is this is a good conversation for the larger community call, but yeah, yeah. That, I mean, yeah. this has been an open thing in my mind is we don't technically have to go to three, but do we want to like leverage the effort anyway to make yeah. that happen? That okay. was my thought is we should. Um, it does mean that we need some sort of within Akapai or any framework, some sort of idea of having a synonym um, for a did so that if a, a did peer two comes in, we find the connection. If a did peer three comes in, we find the same connection. So we do have to have this idea that that this concept that the dids used in a connection can have synonyms and and resolve to the same one when searched for. So that's an interesting side issue that would have to be supported when we have and, and but I think it's necessary as well because if we want to support you know unqualified dids and you know the did peer two version of that again we've got to support synonyms so I think that's a concept we're going to have to have anyway. Um. So with that, um, uh, BC Gov. Uh, CIRO is going to take a look at this, take a look at the existing PR and look at what it would take to convert to the did peer two and three. And again, just for that same comment, Sam, of if we're going to do D two, then we might as well do three. Um, this idea of supporting synonym dids so that when you get a message in and it's got a did uh, different it could have different dids pointing to the same connection, um, be able to support that. And then if, if my theory, which is still a theory, is that we can actually do a, uh, a, <clears throat> a canonical conversion of a unqualified dids to did peer, uh, did peer three. <clears throat> so that's the work that we're planning on doing um, in this short while. And then um, is th there is still not a community coordinate update RFC out there, Sam? I don't believe so. Um, the uh, Animo agreed to write that given their experience with, uh, with the code and the, and the method they pioneered. So I haven't, I haven't checked yet today. I'll check on with them and, and it's possibility now that I've got the, the vacation in the workshop past me that maybe I could do a write up on that. I don't think it would take long. Comments, questions from anyone? So a, a quick side comment. I don't know how how deep we need to go on this right now, but just thinking out loud for a second, I think in did come be one, we tend to rely more heavily on the verties of the dids anyways. So in supporting, uh, making that transition from unqualified dids to 
uh, Peter did two and three. Um, like when we look up connections, for instance, we're looking them up by the keys that encrypted okay. the messages that we receive. Okay. Um, so so th there might be, I'm sure there's going to be fun stuff to figure out in there still, but maybe that yeah. realization helps point us in the right direction. Um, the other comment I had, and maybe this is uh, uh, a bit of a controversial take, but, um, and this could just be my perception as well, I don't know, but um, I, I get the feeling that a lot of our emphasis on backwards compatibility within Akapai has encouraged the rest of the community to remain in a state where they're using unqualified DIDs and things like the connection protocol and stuff. Um, in this process of updating for dear, well, peer did uh, two and three, should we, I, I'm wondering if we should be a little bit more uh, willing to break things. Aggressive, uh, yeah. aggressive at breaking things. Yeah, That's like and kind of pulling because of it, still to this day we're still very frequently using connections i think in the yeah. wild today um yeah. and that's still using did solve blah 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 that right. daniel created randomly one day in provo right. versus you know message prefix http did com I, I agreed um so. so what i would suggest on that one is um proposing you know once we get to this this pr or this community like we suggest okay what should the breaking change be we change to 09 or 1.0 of akapai um what do we do for backwards compatibility are we willing to accept but not generate unqualified dids was that sufficient um, are we requiring that when you upgrade to one or to the next, the breaking change, that you must convert your existing ones to qualified to participate? I don't know. We'll have to think about that. There's so there's, there's a balance there's, there. There's the later phases of the community coordinated update, which are 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 weak or, or are soft by design in the sense that removing yeah. support for the old is something that is not necessarily coordinated as a community. Yeah. Um, but uh, but but everyone is you know required to to use the new, which means that I think that uh, Daniel's suggestion can be applied by actually setting at least within Akapai a deadline for the removing of the old, and that uh, this might be a really good chance to do a little bit of cleanup there and force folks to to come up to to current. Um, we're we're on a on a r relatively quick pace. Yeah. That if they don't, there's going to be significant problems anyway. And so uh, doing it a little bit early is, I think, a good behavior as a community to avoid uh, more problem, you know, pr problems that will pile up against the conversion to DidCom v2 um, yeah. and make that transition even harder. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Well, thanks everyone for attending. Um, we will be, I will be trying to be um, encouraging the maintainers to be tracking these PRs that we talked about today um, as they come up for either reapproval or or just simple, simple merging. Um, so please be responsive to that if, if you get assigned um, to look at a, a, a PR, it would be appreciated if you could, and um, we'll try to get those done. The next call, we'll probably go through another few of these, um, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks all for attending. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.